Hey, welcome back to Phaser Tech. Today I'll be showing how to set up a live video stream using your Raspberry Pi's camera that can be viewed from any computer connected to your home network. This guide is a continuation of my previous video where I showed how to install the Diet Pi operating system. So if you haven't set up your Raspberry Pi yet, then you should definitely see that one first. The packages I'll be installing today will actually work on any Debian or Ubuntu based system, including desktops and laptops with webcams. But a few of the steps and configurations will be slightly different, so I'll try to point out the differences as I go in case you wanted to try it with something else other than a Raspberry Pi. Also, if you're already running with the regular Raspberry Pi OS, then you can also follow along with most of this guide too. But again, there will be a few minor differences, so if you want to follow every step of this guide exactly, then I encourage you to check out my previous video and install DietPy. And one last thing before I begin. I'll be releasing more tutorials in the near future, showing how to create a custom Python program for a smart camera that will automatically record only when motion is detected. So if you're interested in learning Python programming, then be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with this series of videos. Alright, let's get started. First, make sure your Pi is connected to the network through Wi-Fi or Ethernet. You'll also need a camera. There are several different versions of the Raspberry Pi camera, but if you're on a budget then the first version is only 10 bucks now, and it still provides good quality with up to 1080p 30fps video which is more than enough for a security camera. I'll be using this one today. Also, USB cameras will work too, but the CPU usage will be higher and can slow down the older Pi models, so I recommend a Raspberry Pi camera. Let's begin by logging into the Pi with the root user. Now before we install packages, let's update the repositories by typing sudo apt update. After the update, type sudo apt install v4l-utils and confirm the installation. This package allows for extra options and customizations with the camera. It shouldn't take long to install. Next, let's install ffmpeg which provides the media codecs. So type sudo apt install ffmpeg. This package requires a lot of dependencies, so it'll take a while to finish installing. Once it's done, we're ready to install RTSP Simple Server, which is a network server that uses the RTSP protocol. There are other protocols that are commonly used as well, but I found that RTSP offers the best performance and latency. We'll need to download this software directly from GitHub. If you're using a desktop or laptop, then you'll want to copy this file name here, Linux AMD64. Copy the file name so you can paste it in the following command in a minute. If you're using the original Raspberry Pi or the Raspberry Pi Zero, then copy this file name with the ARMv6 in the name. If you're using an 8GB Raspberry Pi 4 with an ARMv8 image installed, then you'll need this ARM64v8 file. But for the majority of Raspberry Pi users, you'll want the ARMv7 file. This is what I'll be using, so I'll copy this file name. Before downloading it, first make sure you're in the home directory. You should already be in the home directory, but in case you're not, just type cd tilde to get there. Now the following command is a long one, so I left it in the video description to make it easier for you to copy and paste. Just make sure the file name in the command matches the file name you copied a minute ago. You can see I'm using the armv7 version. This command will download the compressed file and then extract its contents. Alright, so we've downloaded all the software we need to get the stream working. All we need to do now is run it. But instead of manually running these commands every time I turn on the Pi, I'm going to set an automated bash script that will run each and every time the Pi is powered on. The script runs quietly in the background and doesn't require any input from the user. 
To do this, let's go into the DietPy's configuration by typing sudo dietpy-config. Keep in mind this process and the file you need to edit will be different on other operating systems, but you should be able to use the same bash script I'm about to use. Now navigate down to auto start options. Next go to the other section and then select custom script foreground with auto login and enter. Use the arrow keys to navigate the cursor above the exit zero line. This is where we're going to paste several commands to start the video server. I'll also leave this in the video description so you can easily copy and paste it. The last line is very long and it runs off the screen here. So I'll use the arrow keys to scoot over to the beginning. Let's go over each of these commands and what they do. The first line starts the RTSP server that will communicate with the local network. The next line sets the Raspberry Pi camera's bitrate. If you're not using the Raspberry Pi camera, it's important to remove this line completely since it probably won't work with other cameras. I have mine set for 15 megabits which I found to be the optimal bitrate for the Pi's camera at this resolution and frame rate. You can set this value higher, but I didn't notice a quality difference at this resolution, so I think it's better to save the bandwidth. Lowering the bitrate might be a good idea in certain situations, but I'll come back to this in a minute. The next line starts the camera, and this is where you can change the video settings. If you're not using the Raspberry Pi camera and using, let's say, a USB camera, then you might need to change the dash input format and the dash f input parameters since certain cameras use different compression methods. I found that my Logitech's USB webcam works with these settings, but my laptop's built-in webcam required a different input format to work. If you have multiple cameras connected, then you can specify which one to use with the dash i tag. If you only have one connected, then it will always be video 0. If you connect a second webcam, then that will be assigned as video 1, and so on. You can also select the video resolution and frame rate here, but this will depend on what your camera is capable of. You can see here the different video modes that the Raspberry Pi camera version 1 is capable of doing. Take note the different resolutions also give different fields of view. So if you want the widest field of view, then you'll actually want to go with a lower resolution than 1080p. Also notice this list that shows which frame rates are supported for each resolution. Keep in mind the original Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi Zero might struggle with 1080p 30fps video. These models only have a single core CPU, while all the other Pi models have a quad core, which gives a massive difference in performance. So if yours has a single core CPU, you'll probably need to lower the bitrate and the resolution to 720p if you want smooth frame rates, especially if more than one computer will be viewing the stream. Also, if you have network problems such as a bad Wi-Fi connection, then lowering the bitrate can help sometimes too. Now, the setting you need to take note of is the address which your stream will be broadcasted to. Right now it's said to be called my stream, but you can name this whatever you want. I'm going to change it and name the stream feeder, but make sure to leave the rest of the address as it is. It'll be broadcasted to the Pi's IP address on port 8554. Now let's save the file. Press Ctrl X and you'll be prompted if you want to save. Type Y and enter to confirm, and enter again to confirm the file name. Select root and press enter. Now navigate out of the menu by going to exit. And exit again, and then select OK. Now let's reboot the system. If everything went smoothly, then you won't need to log into the Pi. Every time it turns on, it will automatically start broadcasting the stream. Now to view it, I recommend using the VLC media player which is available for Windows, Mac, Linux, and other platforms too including Android. Open VLC and click media in the top left corner. Then go to open network stream. Enter the stream's address here, which will be rtsp colon slash slash followed by your Pi's IP address 
then colon eight five five four slash and the name of your stream, which in my case I called feeder. Now all we have to do is push play and wait a few seconds, and you should now see your live video stream playing. It might hiccup for a second at the beginning, but once it gets going, it should be a flawless stream with minimal latency, as long as you have a good network connection. Well, hopefully you found the guide easy to follow. If you enjoyed it, then please like and subscribe to help my channel grow. Like I already mentioned, I plan to return to this project and do a series of videos teaching Python programming, but it might be several weeks before I return to it, because I have a few other tech-related videos planned first, so please stay tuned. Also, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or a suggestion for a project. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.